You have insisted that banks must be able to fail, but can absolutely all banks fail? Well, first of all, it's very important that we have healthy, that we have resilient banks which serve the real economy. Yeah? This is the first point, and that is our task in banking supervision. But then, if a bank has a very weak business model, um, if it has no chances anymore more to survive, yes, then it should uh, uh, fail. And it should fail in a very orderly manner. Um, the more important the bank is for the real economy, the more interconnected it is with other banks and with the markets, um, the higher the requirements are for the resilience of the bank. So um, the largest banks yeah, in the world, the so-called global systemically relevant banks, they have higher uh, capital requirements, they have higher requirements with regard to risk management in order to make them safer in order to make them more resilient. Um, and then, if they were to fail, yeah, there is more buffer there um, to ensure um, that there is a room um, to rearrange and restructure to resolve the bank. Yeah. And these kind of tools, um, how to restructure them, you know, how to restructure banks and how to use these tools, these are very important and um, yes, they need to be used if it is necessary. But again, please, yeah, the first task, the most important task is uh, to ensure that banks are resilient and do not fail. Now, how likely is it that public money will be used in the future to fund the losses of failing banks? Well, with the new framework, um, it is less likely that public funds are used if a bank were to fail. Um, you do have um, capital buffers, um, you have subordinated debt, um, you have the so-called TLEC or EMRA, the minimum um, requirements um, for uh, liabilities which you can bail in, and uh, shareholders and investors have to pay first. They are the ones who have to take losses because they got the risk premium. They uh, reap the benefit yeah, uh, from these um, debt instruments and um, equity instruments. So they should be the first uh, to pay. There are some, a few exceptions where public money can be used according to the European law. And uh, one of these exceptions are the precautionary recapitalization uh, tool. Uh, and, but this can only be used if there is a public interest in um, having the bank surviving um, a crisis. And it can only be used under very strict conditions. So um, the shareholders and the subordinated debt has to pay first. The bank has to be solvent. Um, can only cover the public money, um, losses or shortfalls um, which derive uh, from um, uh, not uh, losses and likely losses uh, that cannot be covered by public funds. It can only covered, be covered by private funds. But um, shortfalls you s see coming, for example, from the adverse scenario um, of a stress test. Yeah? So they are very strict, um, restricted. Uh, conditions in order to use public funds and um, uh, the moral hazard which um, the new framework um, tries to fight against that shareholders and investors uh, reap the benefit, uh, the risk premium, the dividend, but you know, um, socialize the cost. These kind um, of moral hazard can't happen if you um, um, apply the new framework um, strictly and accordingly. Um, lastly, could you tell us more uh, about the idea of introducing moratoriums when dealing with failing banks? Well, a moratorium can help um, the bank, um, the shareholder, but the supervisor too, um, uh, to create a little bit room to breathe, to find a solution. It freezes in um, the activity of the bank um, with a moratorium, um, applied by the supervisor, uh, nobody, nobody can withdraw assets, um, funds, liquidity anymore uh, from the bank and it is in a kind of, you know, freezing in time and during this very short time, uh, the shareholders, the owners, um, they can look for a solution. Uh, they can 
um, for example, find new shareholders or they can find new sources of liquidity. A moratorium cannot um, be uh, taken or as a solution for every case. Yeah? It is only possible in specific cases, um, but nevertheless, if you can use it, it is a quite powerful tool. We have one problem um, in the euro area. Um, the moratorium is nothing what is harmonized on a European level. It's not a tool which is given by the European lawmaker, but it is a national tool. This means we have um, countries where you, we do not have a moratorium at all, and we have countries where the moratorium um, is issued by the court, and we have countries where the moratorium is issued by the supervisor. So it can happen for a cross-border bank, for example, that um, the parent um, uh, can be put in a kind of freezing in time um, by the supervisor. Um, one subsidiary in country A, for example, um, there can be only a moratorium issued by the court, so the supervisor is very dependent on the court. And in another country with another subsidiary of the same group, um, it is not possible uh, to freeze in. So this is a huge stumbling block for us. And uh, we um, are convinced that especially with regard to this tool, in order to be most effective and efficient, we need to have a harmonization on the European level.